All right, let's take a very in-depth look at all 13 receivers on the current Chiefs roster and talk about who I think is going to make it, get signed to the practice squad, and ultimately get cut. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, the Dark Lord of the Beards, the better Cole than Beasley, and sometimes also known as the Rampage Red Ballistic Beard of Doom, aka the Red Beard Reaper, and I do daily news about the Chiefs and the NFL overall, so go ahead and sub if you're new, one, because I freaking love coffee, and two, because I'm insane and wake up at 4 a.m. every morning to provide more valuable Chiefs content than almost anybody else out there, and hit that like button if you agree that I am insane for doing this every single day. And let's get into this video, which is one big deep dive into the 13 wide receivers that we currently have on the roster leading up the training camp. I'm going to cover them all, then at the end, tell you who I think is going to make the roster, the practice squad, and get cut like a little piece of paper in art class. So without further ado, here we freaking go. First up is McCall Hardman, who is now the most veteran Chiefs receiver at only 24 years old. And I use the term veteran here as in who's been on the team the longest, seen the most receptions, all that good stuff. Not necessarily who has been in the league the longest, just for clarity in case you wanted to correct me already in this video. Anyway, McColl was drafted in the second round of the 2019 NFL Draft by the Chiefs, the chefs who cook it up every single year. Anyway, this is year four for him, a contract year, a must perform year. Last season, Hardman caught 59 receptions, a career high for 693 yards, and two little TDs. 25 of those receptions, by the way, were from behind the line of scrimmage where he racked up 252 yards and both of those TDs, and that earned him the highest PFF grade among receivers with at least 20 such targets. On top of that, he finished last season very strong, unlike my biceps, recording 342 yards from scrimmage over his final five games, including the playoffs. So I say that to say this, they found effective ways to use McColl and get that man involved, and he will fill in some of the Hill absence in ways and is a definite roster lock to me, no doubt. Next up is Sky Moore, the Chiefs' 54th overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. We talked about him more in yesterday's video, but last season he had nearly 1,300 yards receiving and 10 TDs, broke the most tackles of any receiver in the FBS with 26, and was only one of five players in the FBS to average at least 7.9 catches per game in 2021. He's a bit smaller in size, 5'10 and 195 pounds, but has the hands the size of a gorilla and will basically catch the ball almost any time it is thrown his way. So let's freaking go Sky Moore, you little roster lock you. That's right. Sky is also a roster lock, barring injury, of course. And speaking of roster locks, next up is Juju Smith-Schuster, the former Pittsburgh Steeler TikTok star who has spent the last five years with the Steelers since being drafted in 2017. The first three seasons of his career were pretty incredible, even though year three he had a knee injury that limited him to 12 games. He still became the youngest player in league history at the time to reach 2,500 career receiving yards at that point, surpassing Hall of Famer Randy freaking Moss. Not an easy task, I assure you that. And this man, not Randy Moss, but Smith Schuster, is six foot one, 215 pounds, and has quite a pair of mitts on him. They measured in the 97th percentile in size. At the 2017 NFL Scouting Combine, so yes, he can catch that nice little football. And over the last two seasons, Smith-Schuster lined up in the slot 62% of the time, and most of those routes were designed to be short, aka under 10 little yards, and was proven to be very effective there. And he can also yak it up. And I'm not talking about someone who drinks too much alcohol at night. I'm talking about yards after the catch, because he's ranked 19th most in the NFL in yak since 2017 with a total of 1,725 yards despite only playing in five games last season. So that's pretty freaking noteworthy to me. And because of that, here we go. And cheers to Juju and Kelsey, who in theory will both be picking apart the middle of the field almost at will, Lord willing. And the last certified lock, in my little opinion, is the former Packer, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who was drafted by Green Bay in 2018. A fifth round pick, I might add. And his best season was in 2020, where he had 3-3, 33 receptions for 690 yards and six little TDs. 
and he led the league in yards per reception with 20.9. Another noteworthy stat is that last season, MVS reached the speed of 22.09 miles per hour during a 75-yard TD grab, making him the fastest receiver in the league last year as far as top speed goes. So he clocked in faster than even Tyreek himself, which is not an easy task. And this was the 14th time since 2018 that MVS clocked in over 20 miles per hour on a little route that he ran. So not only is this man fast, but he's also pretty freaking tall at six foot four and leads the NFL in average depth of target over the past two seasons, which was 18.4 yards in 2021 and 18.2 in 2020. Basically, the Chiefs just need to run the ball can you say that again? The Chiefs just need to run the ball, then eat in the middle with Juju and Kelsey, feed Hardman on these little quick route behind the line of scrimmage passes, and then that will force the two high shell to come down, and then bomb it to MVS over the top for an easy TD. That's crazy. I should be a coach or something. Hire me, Chiefs. I'll bring you good vibes, one great beard, and a nice cup of coffee every single day. I don't know what I'm saying or why I'm saying this right now, so let's move on. There's your four certified roster locks. Now, let's go ahead and touch on the rest of the guys fighting for a spot on the roster, starting with those who have shown the most promise this offseason in OTAs and minicamp via media reports, and also those that I think have a good chance of making the roster at wide receiver five or six or the practice squad. So you have Josh Gordon first up, the 31-year-old veteran who sparked the league in 2013 with the Browns going for over 1,600 yards and nine little TDs. He also has had his fair share of struggles, mainly with substance abuse, which has led to multiple suspensions over the years, yes, but in a sense has also preserved this man's body. As early as 2018, just a few years ago, he had 40 receptions for 720 yards with the Patriots. So there is still promise. And then of course, Joined the Chiefs last season, saw seven starts with them, but was really still getting the playbook down, learning the system, and did not amount to much on offense last season at least. But Gordon's biggest supporters have said he just needs a full offseason to get better acclimated, slim down a tad, which he has, by the way. He's looking lean, mean, and ready to eat. And then they also say he needs to learn Andy Reid's complicated playbook, because it is. Well, he seems to be doing all the right things and has been a standout thus far with a real shot in making the roster, in my opinion. The only real problem I see about Gordon is that he won't really have much special teams contribution, which makes it a wee bit more difficult in my eyes to bring him on as wide receiver five or six. Two positions that probably need to play special teams as well to bring their overall roster value up on some level. You could argue wide receiver five doesn't need to, but for sure, wide receiver six if they bring on six this year. In spite of that, though, I still think Gordon has a good chance of making the roster as of right now, or at the very least, the practice squad. Only to be activated, mind you, when injuries occur this upcoming season, because they will. All right, I don't know why I just got so mad. Next up is Justin Watson, the 26-year-old former Buccaneer who has been the topic of discussion many a times during OTAs and minicamp, as he seems to be on a mission to show out and impress, and so far, he seems to be doing just that. He was drafted by the Bucks in the fifth round of the 2018 NFL Draft and spent the last four years with them mainly playing special teams, logging 644 little special team snaps between 2018 and 2020. But he did catch 23 passes for 258 yards and two TDs in 40 games. So not much. <laughs> but then he got injured, had knee surgery, and because of that, he didn't really play in 2021 and now finds himself here in Kansas City fighting for a roster spot. I've talked about him a few times now, but I believe he has a decent chance of making this little roster as wide receiver six because of his special teams ability, yes, but also because of the fact that he's been seeming to stand out among the rest of the receivers as someone who could also contribute on offense and make plays as well. The real test for this man, and really anyone else, will be training camp when the pads come on, but more on that later. Next up is the most popular but the most question marker receiver to me, that's not a word, but whatever, of the group. And that is former Clemson standout Justin Ross, who signed with the Chiefs as an UDFA, UDFA UDFA to fight for a spot on the roster after the Chiefs medical staff found him fit enough to sign. They cleared this man. Most know the story, but he has been riddled with injuries. He had surgery on his spine in 2020 and a stress fracture in his little foot in 2021, having surgery on that as well. But He's bounced back 
finding himself on the 90-man roster and has even had a couple smaller standout moments during OTAs. He's a fan favorite, as everyone loves a good comeback story, including me. And the Chiefs social media team has certainly taken advantage of that, creating a lot of hype about this man online. But then, suddenly out of thin air like Batman in a smoke bomb, he disappeared just before mandatory minicamp, didn't attend a session, and not one word has said about this man since. I cannot find this man. He might be missing, but my thought here is this. He's dealing with some sort of injury again, albeit it could be a very minor one, or the Chiefs are going to find an injury on this man again, which wouldn't be too terribly hard to justify based on his injury history, and we'll stash him on IR or the pup list or the practice squad. However, the complicated process works of someone who's injured being able to stash them for a year to work with him and develop him for the 2023 season. Again, this is merely speculation from my beard, and we will see more come training camp. For all I know, he could show up to training camp and make the freaking roster, but I don't see that as likely at the moment. He also could just straight up get cut, and if that's the case, I would fear Justin's hope to make it in the NFL would be pretty slim like shady at that point. Another thing working against Ross, in my opinion, is he's not someone who's going to be contributing on special teams because of his injury history with the spine and such. So even if he was able to make it on the roster as wide receiver five or six, his lack of multi-purpose usage is definitely something that would not work in his favor. Anyway, time will tell with Ross, but he's quite the freaking mystery to me at this point. From here, Let's touch on the rest of the guys on the list who are also fighting for their chance at making the roster, starting with a guy who, in my opinion, still has a great shot at making it because he was on the active roster last year at some point, which is a good sign, and that is Darius Fountain. He was a former fifth-round pick by the Colts in the 2018 NFL Draft, making the practice squad that season, then underwent ankle surgery in 2019, bounced back between the active roster and practice squad before his contract with the team expired. In January of 2021, yeah, he never really saw much playing time with the Colts, if we're going to be honest, but tried out for the Chiefs last May, making the team, had an impressive preseason with 10 catches for 118 yards, and ended up making the freaking roster. He only appeared in five games last season, though, but contributed primarily on special teams, which is why I still think he may have a shot at making the roster this year as, like, wide receiver six. He knows the playbook the scheme, and has seen active playing time on the roster with Uncle Dave on special teams. I will say this, though. Unlike Justin Watson, who also has special teams experience, albeit not with the Chiefs, Fountain has been very quiet throughout OTAs and minicamp, which is why I feel like Watson currently has the edge over Fountain to make the roster. The Chiefs want their wide receiver five or six on the roster to be multi faceted to contribute on special teams of course but also to step up on offense when needed and especially in case of injury to another receiver be able to make plays happen so that's why I'm currently leaning Watson over Fountain but I'm no coach I'm just a bald guy with a beard sitting here in my basement trying to do my best here anyway next up is Cornell Powell who I will touch on after a word from my new sponsor Manscaped just kidding I don't have any sponsors. Back to the video. Cornell Powell, the Chiefs' fifth round draft pick from the 2021 NFL Draft, who came from Clemson. He had hype leading up to training camp last season, but was waved goodbye and signed to the practice squad where he spent the entirety of last season. The pros, though, for Powell right now are just that. He's been with the team, although it was with the practice squad for a year, but he has that experience under his belt. He's young, knows the playbook, has rapport with the coaching staff, and could also contribute on special teams as well. So I think out of the remaining guys left on this list, Powell has the most going for him because of that. Of course, after Gordon, Watson, and Fountain. And remember, I'm not including Justin Ross in this equation because he's a big fat question mark. I don't know what to do with that guy right now. He stresses me out, if I'm going to be honest. From here... I'm going to cover briefly the rest of the guys that I think have a truly uphill battle to make the roster at all. First up is Corey Coleman, who has a very wild story. If you don't know it, here's a quick summary. He was notably the 15th overall pick of the 2016 NFL draft by the Cleveland We Suck Horribly Browns. And shout out to Baker Mayfield, by the way, for making it out of that pathetic team and onto the Panthers, getting away from the dumpster fire organization known as the Browns. What a mess. Anyway, Corey Coleman broke his hand in 2016 in a game and then again 
broke this same hand in 2017 in a game, forcing him to miss a lot of those first two years because of the breaks, the surgeries, and all that. And because of those injuries and surgeries, he didn't see much playing time. And in 2018, this man demanded to be traded. So to the Bills he went, but was released by them only a month later, then signed by the Patriots, and released three weeks later, then signed with the Giants, actually making the active roster for a bit, and even catching five receptions for 71 yards in eight games, starting one of them. But then, in 2019, he tore his ACL on the first day of the Giants training camp and missed that entire season. So he floated around in New York on the practice squad and then was released in November in 2020 before getting suspended for the first six games of 2021 to whatever team he would be signing to or landing on due to violating the league's PED, P-E-D, performance enhancing drug policy and therefore went unsigned in 2021 because who would want to sign this man? He's going to be suspended for six weeks already and he's only basically been on the practice squad for years. So he went unsigned in 2021, took a little break, now finds himself here in KC trying to start fresh and truly fighting a huge uphill battle. Then next, you have Omar Bayless, who was recently noted at OTAs as one of the Chiefs' most consistent receivers out there for what that is worth. A positive, yes, but not enough, in my opinion. A little bit about Bayless. He spent two years with the Panthers being a standout at training camp in 2020 with them. But unfortunately, like so many of these guys, suffered an injury and spent the year on IR. Then the next season on the practice squad, appearing in zero NFL games, and now finds himself in KC, trying to make it happen here. Next up is Gary Jennings, a fourth-round draft pick of the Seahawks in 2019, who has bounced around like a literal pinball to be with the Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, Ravens, Colts, and the Las Vegas Raiders, now with the Chiefs. So yes, he's going into his third NFL season and is now on his seventh NFL team with only one game appearance on his little resume. And then we have the newest member of the group, and that guy's name is Aaron Parker. He earned a contract following a successful tryout during mandatory minicamp last month. He was a UDFA in 2020 signing to the Dallas Cowboys practice squad and then last season appeared in one game for the Carolina Panthers after being on their practice squad for the majority of the season. So now he is here in KC duking it out as the new guy, one of 13 on the roster trying to make it happen. And to note, nine of these players were not with the Chiefs last year, and Hardman is the only returning receiver who caught more than 10 passes last year. A complete overhaul of the receiving core, basically. And so there you freaking have it. 13 guys, four of them are roster locks. McCole Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Sky Moore, and MVS. And then you have four more that have a solid fighting chance for the remaining one to two spots on the active roster. And more on that in a moment. But those four players are Josh Gordon, Justin Watson, Darius Fountain, and Cornell Powell. And those four players, in my opinion, are the guys to watch because one or two of these guys at the moment seem the most likely to make the roster. And then the couple of guys who don't make it on the active roster, in theory, will be the most likely to end up on the practice squad. But back to the rest of these guys on the list because you have Justin Ross, the one big question mark, followed by the four remaining guys who are in the most danger of not making the roster at all. That's active or practice squad. And those four are Corey Coleman, Omar Bayless, Gary Jennings, and Aaron Parker. Now, with all that being said, how many will make the roster? And what about the practice squad, you ask? Well, I will try to answer it for you. The past two seasons going into week one, Brett Veach has elected to keep six receivers on the active roster, though in 2019, there were only five. And then as far as the practice squad goes, at the start of the season last year, they had one receiver on the practice squad. But in many years past, I saw an average of around two, sometimes more. So I'd say it's safe to say five or six on the active roster. And then depending on that, two or three on the practice squad. If we said six is going to make the active, then two on the practice squad, I would say it would look like this. McColl, MVS, Juju, Skymore, Josh Gordon, and either one of these three players, Justin Watson, Cornell Powell, or Darius Fountain, and then whichever of the two of the three that did not make the active roster, I could see then getting signed to the practice squad. All right, look at me in the eyes, deep freaking breath. Woo! Y'all still with me? Because that was a lot of info to look at and go over, but hopefully you found it worth your little while. This is indeed one of the most intriguing groups of the bunch because... 
Basically, everyone outside of McCole Hardman and a couple guys on the practice squad are brand new to the team. And remember, all of this assessment and talk is prior to training camp, which is ultimately the deciding factor that and preseason when the pads come on and some men will be revealed to be boys and vice versa. But this is my best educated guess, opinion at least, until training camp. And from here, I pass the question to you. Do you agree with my assessment here on who will make the active roster in the practice squad? If not, who are you leaning towards? Who's going to get cut? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let's debate about it down there. Like children around the lunch table at school would debate about their favorite cereal for breakfast. Make sure to leave a bearded comment or a super thanks to potentially get mentioned in an upcoming vid. Sub for more daily news like this and check out this video here boop, boop, from KCSN on when they think Orlando Brown Jr.'s deal gets done. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.